Hi everyone! Welcome back to my channel. I'm Tiffany Benson, one part of Team Benson, and today I have peeled back all the shade cloth in my garden to give you guys a little bit of a tour. So let's take a walk. Now we're going to start with the uh, very beginning of my garden. So I have a couple of really good successes and I have a couple of mishaps. So I'm going to show you guys both the successes and the mishaps so maybe you guys can kind of learn from different things that I have going on or see why certain things are happening in your garden. So let's take a look at the first bed. Okay, so as you guys can see, this one is growing really well, but it's growing really slowly. Like all the kale should have been really huge by now, kind of like at least up to here or at least halfway the size of the Swiss chard. The same thing with the lettuce. The lettuce really does not like this Arizona summer. But everything's growing so slowly because I have such a thick cloth over it. So it is allowing some sun, but it's not allowing enough sun to where it's giving the plants enough to photosynthesize. So they're not growing as big as they should. Now Arizona got super hot really quickly. Nowhere ever has it ever been 106 degrees, which it's going to be 107 today, but it's never been this hot this earlier on in May or even the end of April. So a lot of times when I'm planting these things, I know that, okay, it can have some direct sun because it's going to be in the 80s, maybe 90, 91 towards the end of May, but it's going to have some time to establish and really get going. So it really stunted my plants, some of like my brass, like, well, my my kales and my collards and all those things, it really, really stunted them being underneath such thick shade cloth and not getting that direct sun. If I had paid better attention to the weather, I probably would have left them under grow lights a lot longer and let them grow inside and then transplanted them when they were a lot bigger. But I didn't, so it kind of surprised and I don't think nobody really planned for this gigantic heat wave that came through. So normally your plants would be fine, but since there's a heat wave, it's going to have to grow a lot slower. Thank God it's going to cool down a little bit later on in the next two weeks, so maybe that'll allow my plants to get a little bit more sun and to grow a lot bigger. So I am excited though about my corn. My corn did sprout. I got almost 100% germination rate. Only one, which is right here, did not sprout with its neighbor. But these are going to grow nicely. Um, I really do need to let these get a lot more sun. So I've been blocking this whole bed with this giant umbrella because I did not have enough shade cloth and I ordered it from Amazon. So I'm just waiting for it to come in. But I will be trying to get these way more sun because corn needs a lot of sun to grow. My collards are, they're done. They're done and they're spent. One of them has already gotten eaten alive by bugs. The other one I'm just kind of letting die out and get eaten. My green beans are doing well. These are my first set of green beans that I put in and I've been getting a lot of just the dragon tongue bush beans off of these. Now these ones aren't as purple because once again they're underneath the big giant umbrella. So you'll see a couple of them have their coloring but the rest of them are kind of still green like that one is still green. So I'm just letting these grow in and as you can see I'm not doing anything about letting the plants die off. So I'm letting the leaves just kind of fall in here because I want to kind of create more mulch and more things for the worms to eat that are deep down in here. Now as my plants kind of die off, I let them die off. I let, when they're, I'm done eating them and they're done producing anything for me, I just let the insects kind of have them and let them kind of decompose where they're at if I don't have anything going in there right away. If I do have something going in there, I will pull them, chop them up, put them in the worm bin. But if I don't, I allow the worms that are in there to be able to have those plants to eat. And I feel like that's really important. And a lot of people miss that opportunity to let a plant naturally decay on its own. Because when it's naturally decaying on its own, it is then feeding all of the life that is within your soil. And that's a step that a lot of people miss. And then it turns the health of their soil not as great as what they want it to be. So to improve the health of your soil, if you can, let your plants kind of naturally die off. If they're going to seed, let them go to seed. Let their leaves fall, let those, falls, those leaves stay into your beds. So, I'm not sure if this garlic is, is what it needs to be. 
They said when it dies off like this, then you should be able to pull it and it'll be fine, but I'm a little afraid to pull it. I don't think that it's going to be where I needed to be. Garlic farmer, I am not. The problem I think is, is that I did not use seed garlic. I just got garlic from the store because I wanted to see if it worked and I planted it. But all the things that they spray on the garlic in the store, I now see the difference because it really affected the growth of this garlic. Now the squash plant is doing really well. This one is a patty pan squash. And you're gonna see the difference between this patty pan squash and the ones in the other bed that are getting a lot more sun because those ones are huge compared to this one that's not getting a lot of sun. We have the wild cherry there in the back. That is doing well. That one's gonna be uh, my only cherry tomato bush that I have. And then we have the onions that are still doing good. We have the artichoke that is still doing great. And then this beautiful, beautiful sage plant. I love this thing, guys. It smells amazing. And the stackables, we have basil that we have been munching on, and it's doing really well. We have some flowers that are growing in right here. And this chamomile, which is flowering all over the place. And I will have to pick those off in order to start drying them. And then we have some ant mollies there, some thyme on each one of the sides, and some chives. Now out of my strawberry plants, this is the only strawberry plant that's not doing so well. And it's because I didn't plant it early enough. I waited and it got really badly attacked by the sun. So I got sun skull kind of all over it and then I planted it. So I should have planted it a lot earlier. So have you guys ever had a plant that you did not like the way that it looked, but you grew it for medicinal purposes? Mine is chamomile. I hate the look of chamomile in my garden. I think it's the most unpretty plant ever, but I grow it because I love chamomile tea. Chamomile tea calms me, it helps me to sleep well, and it's just, it has so many great purposes to it. But I hate the look of chamomile in my garden. I just wish it would just grow quicker so I can harvest it and then rip it out and put in something that I thought was prettier. I don't know. What plant do you guys not like? The look of but you have to grow because it's going to provide you with something that you actually want comment down below let me know because i don't know maybe it's just me now these strawberry plants on the other hand i have one two and then three four these ones are doing really really well they have been underneath a uh, shade cloth here and this one's already starting to produce strawberries i don't know if these ones are yet but they're nice and tall and they're healthy and they're just doing really really well so if I had planted the other one a lot quicker I think it would have done a lot better my tomato plant is giving me tons of red tomatoes we have already gotten about I would say probably about six tomatoes off of this plant and we already have another one coming in right here and then one two that'll be coming in after that one and then we have still one two three four five six of them still on here now this is a determinate um, bush tomato plant, so it's only gonna give me as much as it's got here. So after all of these are turned red and they're done, then the plant's probably gonna be done because it's a determinate one. What's coming back to life though, guys, is my shishito peppers. This has been war, trying to get these little peppers to, to green back up, get the leaves to green back up and to get healthy. And even this one that got the most of the damage during the hell storm last fall, is doing a lot better so it's starting to really get some greener leaves and all I did was take a lot of compost and just add on top of this guys so I didn't put anything else in there um, I will probably be adding some fish fertilizer but for right now for the last couple of weeks I just took the compost put the compost on it and just kept watering it and you can see the difference that it's made in this plant like these leaves are a lot greener than these leaves and that's just the power of compost so a lot of times growing organically is not going to give you the quickest result, but it is going to give you a result that is going to be more healthier for the plant. It's going to allow the plant to really heal itself and become stronger to where then if something else happens to it, it's going to be a lot stronger and be able to defend itself a lot better. So grow organically and on top of that, you can just eat it and know that there's not any pesticides or craziness on it. So grow organically guys. And look who showed up for Mia to water and it can find its breakfast. I get all these little lizards first thing in the morning and they wait right here. As you can see, they're right close to the soil 
and they just wait right here so when I water they hop down and grab everything that pops up out of the soil it's funny okay so over here we have our Cherokee purple and it is starting to grow in some tomatoes this one looks a little wonky but it has two tomatoes on it right now and it'll probably start flowering again um, a little bit later on once it cools down a little bit this one got a little bit of sun skull as you can see it has some sun damage on it because I didn't have a darker shade cloth I had the white one up here the beans are trying to make their comeback as you can see there's new little beans kind of growing in here this first one got such bad sun skull guys I thought I almost killed it but it is starting to grow back it looks like and I think that it'll grow back even more um, once I have the darker shade cloth on it so this spot everybody's been asking me where I'm gonna put my eggplant this is where it's gonna go so I'm not putting anything right here I just set this little pot right here for now but I'm not putting anything in the ground here until the end of the summer when I pot the eggplant. I wanna wait until after it's done fruiting and then I'm gonna give it some more fertilizer, keep adding just fertilizer and leaves to the dirt. So any of these like bad leaves that are dying and stuff like that guys from the sun school, I just bury a little pile and put them in here because I want the worms to come over here and kind of really, really work this dirt because I'm gonna need a giant hole in here in order to put that eggplant in there. So I'm gonna need that dirt to be softened up. Then we have the rosemary bush that's doing really incredible and it did go through a struggle when it was going through seasons but as you guys can see just a little water and compost and it bounced right back and now it's growing even bigger. This one though, I'm so sad. I broke my purple bean stem. You can see it right there. It was leaning over and I should have put a stake in it and I did not. So this is the importance of growing your beans really closely together because when they get super big like this and they get a lot of beans on them, then it makes them tip over. And if they don't have one another to kind of hang on to, then you can break the stems and then it ruins the entire plant. So this one I am gonna put a stake next to it since it doesn't have any more friends in here and it's too late to plant a seed, but keep going little guy. I need a lot of purple green beans. It's only you now. So now we're getting to the point of my garden where it's my favorite spot. And it's because it has all of my summer veggies. I'm sitting here, guys, and I just got a whiff of the rosemary because the wind blew and it smelled amazing. It actually almost made me lose my train of thought. <laughs> but this is where all of my squash plants are. And I am proud to say that I finally know what I planted where and where I have Armenian cucumbers, where I have cantaloupe, where I have squash. I know now, guys, because now it's big enough for me to identify, and some of them even have some fruit on them. So, let's take a look. So look at these patty pan squash. So this one, I grew from seed right in the bed, and then this one, I started inside and then transplanted it. Now, when I transplanted it, this was a lot happier than this one. Like it was a lot bigger than this one was. But then this one started to take over and get a lot bigger than this one. So they say not to transplant squash, but since I have a small space garden, I do it anyway. And But you can tell the difference between when you let it kind of grow in the ground and when you start it inside. But as you can see, both are flowering, which look at how beautiful that is. But both have flowers on them. It's just that one is a lot bigger than the other. Back here I have the pickling bush cucumbers. So those are starting to grow up and starting to make their climb. I'm gonna take a string and attach to here so that when it starts to put out its tendrils that it'll have something to crawl up. And then the other one over here is my grazini squash. So this one I love because I love the coloring on these leaves it's like a gray that that is on there and when the actual plant fruits which we have a little baby one right there can't wait for that one to come through but when it fruits it's gonna have a mixture of green and gray it's gonna be the actual fruit on it so that one's gonna be really pretty and I'm excited for that one so turns out this is not a cantaloupe this is my Armenian cucumber 
And as you can see, it's already making its climb and doing its thing, but it is going to be beautiful. And it has flowers all on it already. And then we have the sugar baby, way back there is the watermelon, and then we have the cantaloupe. So this is what I thought was here and here. But instead, that's the cantaloupe, and as you can see, it's a lot bushier, and it creates a lot more vines. And then we have the Armenian cucumber that has more of a single vine. But both of them are starting to flower, and they're starting to climb, and I can't wait for them to fill these arches. Now, a lot of people have been waiting to see what these ochre plants look like. And these are them, guys. They are growing in nicely. All of them are starting to get their first little okras on them, but they are doing really, really nice. Now, for those of you guys that have not grown okra before, okra starts off very slow, and it's gonna grow all summer long. These okra plants are gonna last me well into August. When it's in the heat of the summer, these little guys are still gonna be there. But they're just growing nicely and doing their thing. They'll do a layer of leaves and then a fruit, and then a layer of leaves and then a fruit, and they'll just keep going up and up and up and up and up and up and up, and they'll probably be up to about here once they are done. Okay, so here's the question I have for you guys, and I'm gonna do like a little poll with it because I don't know if I want my watermelon to trail along the bed or if I wanna run it up a, a trellis. So it's a sugar baby, so it's probably only gonna get like two feet vines, so they're not gonna be that much trailing, but I think it might be pretty just to kind of have like a little layer of green vines kind of going through the bed of the garden with little watermelons on them. I don't know, what do you guys think? Should I trellis it up or should I let it trail on the ground? Comment down below, let me know. So I'm really excited for this cinder block because I knew I planted green beans and I thought I planted regular green beans, but I did not. I planted some dragon tongue bush beans. And as you can see, these ones get a lot more sun, so they really have their color. And I'm so excited because these green beans are my favorite green beans. I would have these green beans over regular green beans, guys, any day, any day. And so since I learned my lesson on the other one breaking, I put a string down here. I don't know if you guys can see it. But I put a string down here to kind of bring these together closer. And I'm gonna put another one a little bit up higher. So, and a All right guys, so the camera died. So now I'm going back out. But as you can see, the garden's getting really, really huge. Um, one of the things I'm gonna point out to you guys next is that next to my worm compost bin, those plants are doing amazing, probably the best in my entire garden. And it's because they're constantly getting that nutrient and there's so many worms in that little space that it's just putting out tons and tons of worm castings every time I water it. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So right here, as you guys can see, my compost bin is right there but I have a space saver cucumber plant, and then I also have two straight neck squash plants. These plants are huge compared to the other ones, like how quickly that they are growing. These ones have already started making climb, and they're doing really, really well. They have flowers down on the bottom of them, and this squash plant, guys, is already starting to produce squash. And these went in at the same time as the other squash plants. Look at that, already. Now it's because that underneath here, look at how great that is. It's like super dark, just black composted soil. And I've been adding less and less plants or leaves to it to kind of give the worms a chance to eat what's in there. But the cabbages, I'm slowly using their leaves to uh, feed the worms until the end of the summer. But isn't that amazing? That one squash plant and the one next to it has some babies on it too, but the one squash plant has already, I wanna say, four squash on it. And one is actually really kind of big. And then the other one has another two. And they grew just 
really, really quickly and just big because they're constantly getting that nutrients from the worm compost. Now I'm trying to get as much composted down in there. I don't have something I can then move all that worm compost over to something else. I only have that one bed, so or that one bin. So I'm letting the worms kind of compost everything down that's in there, only adding a couple of more things, um, like my cabbage plants instead of throwing them away and pulling them up since they're not going to head up because it's way too hot I've been slowly taking those leaves off of the cabbage plant and putting them in there and kind of digging them around and kind of burying them so that it gives the worms something to eat now there's more than just worms in there there's other different types of composting bugs it's full of pill bugs look at the little <laughs> the little gecko is just running behind me I open up the worm bin and it's like what are we doing what's going on so <laughs> funny story guys I was wondering where all the geckos were I didn't find them for probably like a solid like day I didn't see any geckos and I lifted open the worm bin and there were three geckos just in there and all of the insects were like run away <laughs> because the geckos were just sitting there like free meals. Oh, I'm going to eat this. I'm going to eat that because they're all in there. They're all in there composting everything and kind of just really tearing down all that material. And it took forever for the geckos to figure out that's what was underneath that wood piece. But once they did, they were like, this is where breakfast, lunch, and dinner is. Why? Why work hard to get anything else when it's right there? All right guys, so my poblano peppers are doing nicely. I'm gonna start trimming up some of these bottom leaves and just putting the leaves down there at the base of them so that I'm not getting so much splash up on those leaves because I don't want them, the plant to get sick. But look at that, there's little buds everywhere and it's still flowering despite the fact that it's been in the triple digits for about maybe a week and a half straight. Now what I'm really excited about is my mighty crop. Like look at how cool this is guys. I've been messing with it and kind of adjusting it where I want it to go, but my plants are just growing right up it and it's really keeping this plant healthy. Like it really, really is. And it's, I noticed that they're not sending out so many tendrils too as well because it has something that it's growing on. I feel like my other cucumber plants they're sending out a lot of tendrils because they're looking for something to grab onto. Well, this one kind of already has something where it's supporting itself, so I think it feels like it doesn't need to do as much work. So we'll keep updating. So I'll keep updating you guys on how my cucumbers are growing up my mighty crop. Um, if you guys want to get your own mighty crop, don't forget we have a promo code to where you can get a discount. You can get 10% off by using promo code Team Benson, which I will put right here. Now look at who's finally starting to make their climb, the beans. These ones are the rattlesnake beans, and I have some bush beans right next to it. These beans have gotten a little bit of a work over with the sun attacking those. So once again, the new shade cloth is going up. Pretty flowers for the bees. And these beans are also starting to make their climb. These ones are the Kentucky Wonders, so these ones will really climb up. So usually my Kentucky Wonders last a little bit longer throughout the summer, so I do like to plant those. But the bush beans, which I think these ones are Blue Lake, these ones are getting eaten up a little bit by the sun, but not doing bad. But that sage plant right there is really starting to come in nicely. So over here in the corner, guys, I have some peppers. This jalapeno pepper plant, I have one jalapeno that's still growing on there. They say the more cracking you let get on the jalapeno the hotter the hot jalapeno is so we're gonna let that one crack up and see how hot we can get it and then over here are my cayenne peppers so I'm planning on let these completely ripen up because I'm going to then dry them a little bit later on and this jalapeno plants a little bit younger but as you can see it's starting to get little buds on it too as well and then back there we have the lemon balm which is coming back a little bit and we have the mint, and then a random parsley, and a random flower in my little sea of buckets. Now to replace those cabbages, I have this okra that I've started from seed, and I've just been kind of growing here on, on my table in these little containers. And I'm gonna let it get nice and big, and I'm gonna go get some more compost actually, because I can actually plant this one since I pulled 
this cabbage up. And this cabbage has just been warm food for the worms. And then I have a little planter on here, which I still need to plant something in this one. But I have a little planter on here that is the chamomile. And this one is the Aunt Molly's. These Aunt Molly's are doing really well, which I probably should thin them out because I just noticed that there's three of them growing in here. But they're doing really well because they get a lot more direct sun being on the table. So I love this little space right here, guys. I have to put an umbrella on it so it doesn't get so much sun, but it has the eggplants, which look at all these eggplants on here. They are doing so nicely and so well, and they're just big, thick eggplants. These are the Ichabob eggplants. And then this one is a store basil that I bought. As you can see, it's not doing as amazing as my other basil. It's doing okay. I bought this one because we were eating the other basil way too quickly, so I put this one in here, but they put so many of them in there, it doesn't allow the plant to really, really get healthy. So I might thin, out, thin them out a little bit and see if it'll allow it to grow a little bit better. And then this is my sage that I transplanted into the pot, which is doing really, really well. And some beautiful flowers. And lastly, I'm so proud to say that my aloe vera plant has come back. It's come back to life. It's starting to stand up tall and it's starting to turn green again. So I'm pretty excited about that. So, you know, I really hope that you guys are enjoying your journey and growing your gardens this summer. Um, for us Arizonans, it got hot quick and it, sometimes it's really, really hard to think, okay, let's just get out there even though it's hundred and something degrees and work on my garden because it's hot and nobody really wants to be out here when it's just, when it's that hot but if you just provide it with a little bit of love and a little bit of shade cloth then you can grow anything that anybody else is growing and you don't have to feel left out because you are a desert desert person <laughs> so I hope you guys are growing yourselves gardens and I hope you're having fun with it and you're creating beautiful spaces and always remember even a small space garden can provide you with tons of food. Bye guys!